All right, so um, tonight we are going to go over exam number one, which you guys took last week. I want to make sure that everybody is cool with kind of how I have worded the questions, and I'm going to show you a little bit of like a hack to how to kind of get through multiple choice questions. I like to call it Sesame Street, which is which one of these is not like the other. So we'll go over that, we'll look at the written questions, I'll only spend like maybe 10-15 minutes on, on the exam. You guys may keep these exams, so I never collect exams back, they're yours to keep. You can put them on the fridge, do whatever you want with them, um, and you know, sell them on the market next term, right? When somebody else has, has this class. Okay, so number one. Number one was probably the very first thing that I was trying to teach you at the beginning of this class. So I put the skeletal profit and loss statement on the board, and I asked you guys, what is the goal of business? And somebody said the wrong answer. See if you remember. Somebody raised their hand and said, the goal of business is to make money. Do you remember that? And I said, okay, I'm gonna to prove to you that the goal of business is not to make money, but profit. Remember when I showed you a business that made a million dollars, but it actually resulted in a loss? So, if you choose, chose for number one, A, then you didn't pick up what I was putting down in that part of that lecture a couple of weeks ago, okay? If you chose A, I'm not gonna ask you who did, then you didn't understand that the goal of business is to make a profit. Is everybody clear about that now? The goal of business is profit, and profit is B, the difference between money coming in and money going out. Everybody good, number one B? Yep, the profit is the difference between money coming in and money going out. Yeah, hey, you, you may, it's yours to keep. You may write on it, you may do whatever you like. Put it on your fridge if you want. Okay, number two. So all of these are external, except which one? So, first of all, what does the word external mean? External means what? Outside. outside, yeah, like outside the walls, outside the control. So, another way of asking this question is, which one can a company control? So let's look at these. Like, can a company control the entire business environment of all of America? No way. They can only control their company's environment, right? Can a company control all the business environment across the world? Can a company control politics? Like literally, can one company decide who becomes the next president of the United States? No way. I don't even care if you're like Walmart, the largest corporation in the United States. Like not even Walmart gets to decide that, okay? And then can any one company control the economy again? No. So, Sesame Street question, which one of these is not like the other? Even if you don't understand what the question's asking, corporate culture is where? Inside. You got it. Corporate culture is simply like the vibe. It's the vibe of an organization. It's what the, what the personality internally in a company is. E is different from all the others. E is internal, A, B, C, D is, are external. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Beautiful. Good, that's why I'm doing it. Okay, number three, which one is a law? So let's go through them. So let me go backwards, if you guys don't mind. But number three is asking you, which one of these is a law, okay? D, the value of money. Does a, is a law passed that says money has to have this value? No. When does the value of money change? How often does the value of money change? Definitely, when you're traveling, sure, the value of your dollar changes. Yep. Well, the answer is all the time, ongoing, every day, right? The value of the money that we have varies, fluctuates. There's no law, that's, that's a, a function of the economy. Okay, C, advertising practices. So, um, what part of the United States government controls advertising practices? Does anybody remember from my lecture? Nobody? The FCC, that is the Federal Communications Commission, okay? And so that's a law. What kind of law? A law like you can't lie in ads. Is that a law? Is it legal to lie in advertising? No, it's illegal, okay? That's a law. Um, B, Safety and Health Act, that's things like the Food and Drug Administration. Can companies lie about what's inside their products? No. 
Why not? A law, Food and Drug Administration. And letter A, product identification, again, that's like the Fair Care Labeling Act. Okay, so all of those are law. They're all part of the legal environment of business except D, money. Clear about that? D is not a law, it has nothing to do with the law, it is the economic, but A, B, and C have to do with laws. Cool? Okay, four is easy, pop culture, all of those. They're all the same. None of them are different, they're all the same. They're all part of our socio-cultural socio phenomenon. Okay, five. Five was the value of a dollar, all right? So, when the value of one dollar goes up, is that good or bad for foreign companies? Or let's start with, is it good or bad for American companies? When the value of one dollar becomes really strong, what happens to American companies when they want to sell stuff to other, com other countries? They get less. Right, what'd you say, Eric? Right, it makes it more difficult for American companies to sell American goods to other countries. Why? Because the exchange rate is so different that they essentially lose money Good. outside their right. borders. Because people in other countries can afford less. Their dollar, their currency um, stretches less further. So, let's read these. A, if an economy is doing well enough that most people have jobs, a growing company, oh, this was the wrong example, but okay. Um, a growing company will pay lower wages. Okay, so sorry, this one is about uh, wages, okay? So if the economy is good, do wages go down? They go up, so A is, is duty, yeah? A is just a stupid answer. Okay, B, if lots of people are looking for jobs, wages go up. Yes. Lots of people online looking for jobs, a lot of people applying for jobs, do we need to make wages go up? No, wages go down. If unemployment's high, wages go down, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a million people applying for your job, you don't have to pay a lot. Agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. C, if the economy is good, wages go up. If the economy is good, wages go up. Yes. Yes. That's the answer, C. When the economy is good, when lots of people have jobs, and we need to hire somebody, what do we have to do? Pay more. Pay more. You got it. The answer is C. Good. Okay, D, uh, D. Six, subprime mortgage. What is a subprime mortgage? Who were banks lending money to in 2007 and 8 and 9? People, people who maybe who have bad credit or people who are just not qualified to borrow the money to purchase these homes, all right? So which one of these says that? A, borrowers with low credit. B, the reason the US economy suffered. C, American banks became bankrupt, and D, as a result, we needed a stimulus plan. Which one of those is true? All of them. You better believe that those are all a result of subprime mortgages. Okay, seven, TARP. What is TARP in one word? What is the Troubled Asset Relief Program in one word? Is, it a, is that one word? I think so, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, bailout, absolutely. Um, which one of these says that your federal government basically bailed out these economies. So let's read. A, bailout. B, help the nation recover. And C, gave a whole bunch of billions of dollars to a bunch of industries, including the home industry, the mortgage industry. All of them? Definitely. Everybody agree? Okay. Eight, debt ceiling. What is a ceiling? The max. The max. That's all, the max. A says max, right? Um, by the way, what is D? What is D? The amount of money the government owes its creditors. What is D? Well, look at the next question. There's your answer. What is D? National debt, right? The amount of money that our government owes its creditors is the national debt. All right, number nine, national debt. Is it the, A, the amount of money the government owes its creditors? Yes, but it's also financed by borrowing in the form of bonds, growing beyond 19 trillion, well, Shoot, I need to update that answer. Growing beyond how much? 21, 22 billion, right? Yeah. And borrowed in large parts from foreign countries like China and Japan. Do we agree all? Do these all kind of smell the same? Yes. Okay, 10. Give me another word for pure. Give me another word for pure. Great. Virgin. 
not there in terms of competition. Monopoly No, the opposite. The opposite monopoly. Give me another word for pure. Um, nope. Nope. Same kind of. Really, it's lots of competition. Fair competition. But give me another word. Equal? Close. The word is perfect. Remember? Perfect competition. Right? Another word for pure competition is perfect competition. What is perfect competition? Who can give me an example of an industry that has perfect competition? No. No, the dairy industry. What makes it perfect or pure? Because no one particular organization has Good. majority over the market. Because no one company dominates. Not even a few companies dominate. You have lots of companies, and what are they all doing fair and square? Raul, what are they all doing fair and square? Competing, like you said, competing, okay? So which one of these says that? Um, a, Microsoft having total control, what is that? What is A? What is A? Say it. Monopoly, beautiful, yes. Okay, I'm gonna skip B. C, General Mills of Procter & Gamble sharing control over an industry, what's that? When you have two or three or four companies sharing, Oligopoly, oligopoly, yeah, exactly. And then D, we didn't really ever talk about it in this class, that's price fixing. And that's illegal too. Two companies cannot get together to try to like say, hey, we're gonna team up and control the prices on a product or service. That's illegal, it's called price fixing, okay? There's a law called Robinson Patman Act, can't do that. But the answer here is B, milk suppliers having no control. Got it? Okay, stop me with questions, please. 11, A, B, and C all say the exact same thing. Read them. They all say the exact same thing. So you could not have possibly chose A, B, or C because they're the same answer. So the answer can't be all of the above. So it has to be the one question that is different, the one answer that's different. Socialism. In socialism, who is doing the planning? Government. <laughs> Good, Eric says on his way out. Yes, government, right? The government is controlling what in socialism? Everything. No. All the... Not everything. The way they spend their dollars. Mm, some. What is the government controlling in socialism? The businesses. Which like, ones? Regulate. Which ones? Well, remember, in capitalism, in our country, in our economy, the government regulates but we're not socialist, right? We're a capitalist economy, a free market economy. In socialism, what is the government controlling? The competition. Maybe, but where? You guys know or not? Tell me if you don't. <coughs> What's that? All right, can you Sorry. Okay. Do you guys know or not? Tell me. No. All right, I'm gonna tell you. In socialism, the government is controlling some industries, not all of them. If the government were controlling all industries, what would we call that? If the government is owning and operating and controlling all industries, what would we call that? Communism, communism of course, communism, right? Um, in socialism, the government controls some industries. So give me an example in a country that you know of the government controlling an industry. Well, China's not an industry, it's a country, but yeah. in China, what industry might the government control? Like gas and oil? Sure. Or how about the most obvious one, healthcare, right? Like a country like Canada. <clears throat> All of the hospitals and doctors, who do they work for? Corporations? Okay. Government, that's exactly right, okay? Does everybody understand what socialism is? Yes or no, tell me if you don't. You can't be a human being on planet Earth and not understand that word, Tisha. It's saying that the government controls some industries, okay? That the government owns and operates some industries, that you and I cannot be entrepreneurs in those industries. That a doctor in a country that uh, has government health care could not open a clinic, could not open a doctor's office. 
Why not? Because it's only, only the government can operate it. Just like you and I can basically not open a branch of the post office. Why not? Because it's only government, it's a government entity. Okay? So that's number 11. 11 is C. Number 12. Number 12 also has to do with the idea of socialism versus capitalism. And it's the word privatization. Okay, so let's kill two birds with one stone. Let's look at 12, and then let's look at written number six, because they're kind of the same question. Number 12, privatization. What is privatization? To privatize sounds like to make private. What does private mean? Wade College is private. What does that mean? It's not open to the public. Anybody that wants to come to Wade College can come to Wade College. Not open to the internet? Like the uh, shareholders? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, and I, I don't mean what is a private corporation, but I mean what is private? When a government considers something private, what does that mean? If they have their own ability to regulate. Okay. What else you guys think? Well, what's the, what's the opposite of private? Oh. Public, right? So a public entity is operated by the? People. No. Well, of course, people, yes. But a public entity is operated by whom? If something is public, who operates it? Government. Government. You're exactly right. And if something's private, who operates it? The owner of the corporation. Right. Sole so proprietor, partnership, corporation, business. Okay? So it's business versus public sector. Private sector versus public sector. Okay. So if we privatize something, what are we taking it and what are we turning it into? So you told me public is government and private is business. So if we privatize something, what are we turning it into? What is it going from and what is it turning into? Right. It's going from government to private ability to own and operate it. Okay? The example we used in class was like the post office. Is the post office public or private? Private. I thought it was but now what do you know it is? It's not, it's, uh... <laughs> public. Why is it public? Because the government... Because the government owns and operates it. That's right, okay? You and I cannot start a post office or own a post office, right? It is not meant for private sector. Okay, so which one of these says it was government, but now it's business? Does A make sense? Twelve. Does A make sense? Government taking more control. Does that make sense? What is the government doing with privatization? Converting. But in terms of letter A, what is the government doing? More control? They already have control. Right. And so, if the government's going to privatize something, are they going to take more control? No. They're going to take what? Less control, oh. right? They're, they're less control. Does everybody understand that? Privatization means the government's gonna get out of it. Less control, okay? Almost no control. All right, so A is wrong. Uh, B, what am I up to here? 12, B, government converting enterprise into privately owned business. Are we good with that one? Yeah. Yes. And then C would be government owning and operating. That's not right either. Okay, does everybody understand the answer is B? All right, 13, two cereal producers. Uh, convert the word converting means changing okay and the word enterprise just means an organization Wade College is an enterprise Amy's ice cream is an enterprise enterprise is just another word for organization okay business okay so converting it from government to privately owned business that's what privatization is okay 13 so you're walking down the cereal you think there's 50 brands of cereal but really there are two right Two big companies. What's that called when a handful of companies uh, um, control an industry? You got it. Oligopoly, oligopoly, <laughs> tomato, tomato, potato, <laughs> potato. You got it, all right? The answer is oligopoly. Everybody cool with that? Mm -hmm. Yes, tell me if you're not. If you chose something else and you wanna ask me, hey, why isn't it C? Ask me that, I'm happy to answer that, okay? 14, pizza game. As the price of pizza went up, what happened to your, your willingness to buy it? It went, down. it went down, right? You were like, ah, no way, I'm not paying $15 for pizza. Mm -hmm. What's that called? Uh, 
As the price went up, demand for it went down. What's that called? What's it called? Supply. Supply and demand, right? I'm making pizza, I wanna supply it to you, but as my price goes up, your demand's gonna go down. Okay, that's supply and demand, C. Okay, 15, which is false about unemployment? False, which one of these is not right? A, unemployment is the level of joblessness among people actively seeking work, is that correct? Yes. Definitely, it's correct. A is definitely correct. B, um, when unemployment is low, and there's not a lot of people to hire, wages have to go up, increase. Is that true? Yeah. Definitely. B is, B is definitely true. And then D, when wages, uh, where am I? C. C. Higher unemployment rate, so more people looking for jobs, decreases purchasing power and consumer confidence because of lower wages. Higher unemployment, let me, let me read this. I'm looking at an old version of the exam, and sometimes I fix things. Higher unemployment rate decreases purchasing power and consumer confidence because of low wages. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Higher unemployment rate, so more people looking for work, makes their wages go down, and so they buy less things, okay? Uh, and then D, higher wages reduce demand for products and services. No, what do higher wages do? You make more money, what are you gonna do? More. Spend more, buy more, right? Okay, so the answer is which? D. D. What is your, does false. your exam it's say false. false? Yeah. Should it say true? Yes. Did anybody correct me on that one? No. What is false about the unemployment? It should say, which is true. True. Yes? So no, the answer is D. If, what if it was the, what is false? What uh, which one of these are false? Mm -hmm. Let's see, A is true, <clears throat> B is when it is low and there's shortage of labor, wages increase. True. When unemployment is low, wages increase, that's true. And Okay, I'm sorry, C, yeah, so C, C is okay. false. Yes, so. we good? A, B, and D are true, C is false, do you agree? Yeah. So what if I put C? I, yeah. Yeah. What was the? What's the answer on the key? It That's what. Okay. okay. I owe you guys one point five points. Somebody tally it up. Okay. Tally it up. Beautiful. It's on. <laughs> However, will I remember? Somebody's got to remind. Me. Okay. That's what was my confusion there. Okay. Fifteen. I owe you guys one point five points. Okay. Sixteen. Developing. Which one of these describes developing? A, lack of infrastructure. Is that developing? No. B, lack of a growing middle class. Is that developing? No. C, lack of exporting. Is that developing? No. D, well, we know D is true because it's the only one left. Undersaturated market. What does that mean, undersaturated? Like a lot. Lack of. I asked you guys, where do you think Starbucks wants to expand? And we got to the answer of developing countries because the developing countries are undersaturated. What does undersaturated mean? Not there. Yeah, well, or a not a ton of competition there yet, right? That there's still demand for a product, but there's not a Starbucks in every corner. Okay, so the answer is D. Undersaturated market, growing demand for goods and services, infrastructure is there, manufacturing and exporting is there. That's a good definition of a developing nation like Zimbabwe. Cool? Good? 17, which is true about international trade? A is true, B is true, right? Can't depend on one economy. C is true, answer is D, all of those. Those are all true. Questions? Does everybody understand why those are true? Yes? Yeah. Tell me if you don't. Pick one if you don't understand why it's true. Good? All right. I'm gonna assume you guys are good. 18, but stop me if you're not. Okay, so trade. Balance of trade. Export more than import. Is that a balance? Is export more than import a balance? No, of course not. If you export more, do you have a balance? No. Okay. B, surplus. 
export less. Is that a surplus? Export less. Mm, I thought it was. Which does a country want to do, export or import? Export. Want to export. We want to make our goods and sell them. Okay. So if you export less, is that a surplus? Is that good? Is that positive? No. Of course not. C. Deficit. Import less. Is import less good or bad? It's good. Import less. Right? Import less means export more. That's good. So that can't, that's not a deficit, that's a surplus. <coughs> D. Deficit. Is a deficit positive? No. No, it is not. So then we are down to E. E. Is a deficit a negative balance where you import more? Yes. Import more. Is import more bad? Yes. yes. That means you have a dependence on foreign economies for their goods and services. So the answer has to be E. A so deficit like, is a negative balance of trade where you import more. So surplus trade. is positive and greedy? Surplus is positive and it is where you export more or import and less. Deficit? 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 The negative one, you don't want it. Correct. Correct. Just like with the budget. You never want a deficit with a budget, it means you've, you don't have enough money. Okay? Do, um, Denise. C and E say the same thing? They do, except one says import less and one says import more. Oh, Which okay. one of those is a deficit? Im Which is bad? Import. Okay. Import more is a deficit. Who imports more? United States of America. Yes? E. E is the right answer. We import more. Good? Yes. Okay. 19. What do you call the money that travels all around the world? It travels around the world because of tourism, but it really travels around the world because of import export. Balance of payments. Good. Okay. Let's go through A, B, C, D, E. Can you find out? Yes, I can. Um, Let me make sure. Let me see what happens. Remember when I asked you guys a while ago if you've been to another country and you guys told me the other countries you visited? Yeah. And I asked you what you spent your money on in that other country? Uh, and you told me what you spent your money on? And we talked about you leaving a little bit of money in another country, you taking American dollars and leaving them in another country. That's a small reason why money leaves our economy. The bigger reason why money leaves our economy is when a company like Walmart buys goods, right? That money that flows in and out and in and out of countries is called the balance of payments, okay? And those are uh, through us? It's through you as a tourist, small, and it's through, the, it's through import export. So think about a company like Walmart, when it imports billions of dollars of goods, what is it exporting? Money, American money. American money is leaving our economy. Okay? That's called the balance of payments. Okay, number 20. Let's go through A, B, C, D, E. So what's an exchange rate? Exchange rate is the value of one dollar in another country's currency. It's what one dollar is worth in Mexican pesos, in euro, in English pounds. Okay? 20. Okay, first of all, what is outsourcing? <clears throat> A. What is outsourcing? Could be. So it's basically purchasing goods or services from another country, right? Usually when we say outsourcing, we're talking about services, okay? So, number 20, contracting with foreign suppliers to produce products is outsourcing. Everybody with me? When the Gap gets their shirts made in Sri Lanka, that's outsourcing. What are they outsourcing? Manufacturing, right? That's outsourcing, okay? Um, when Wayne College gets another company down the block to make marketing for us, that's outsourcing, okay? 21, the right to produce products and services using a trademark. I asked you guys in class what fragrances you wear. Do you remember that? It was like and a bunch of you told me fragrances, but I told you that your fragrances are probably manufactured by a company whose name is not even on the bottle. What's that called? Licensing. licensing. That company is licensing the right to make those fragrances under the designer's name. That's licensing. Okay? Actually, 
do you see that these are kind of in order of answer? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 22 is C, right? When you allow another business to operate your business, but using your specific operation requirements, sounds like McDonald's, local owner operator operates at McDonald's, what do we call that? Franchising. Franchising. And then 23, import. Made there, sold here. Yes or not? An import, it's made over there, sold over here. True. 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 Absolutely true, right? An import is made in China, sold in the United States. That's an import. True. And export is what? Export is made in America, sold in China. Right? Made here, sold there. Okay? 24, a tariff is a tax on goods coming in? Yes. Definitely. 25, NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, also known in some circles as the United States, Canada, Mexico Agreement, USMCA is an agreement between US, Canada, and Mexico that opens borders so goods can pass freely without trade barriers like tariffs and quotas. Basically true, okay, basically true. 26, how is the EU different? So I gotta tell you guys, all of these answers are okay. They're all, they all describe the EU, but only one answer tells you what makes the EU different. In plain English, what makes the EU different from the other trade agreements? In, in this, this plainer English. Money. Money. What'd you say? Except no, they all they're all opening borders. Yeah, all five of those agreements open borders, at least for goods. The main thing that makes the European Union different is that those countries put their money together. Is everybody clear about that? How many countries? 27. 27, you got it. 27 countries merge their currency into one currency. What's the name of the currency? The euro, exactly. So which one of these says that? C, unified, unified means one, monetary system. One money, that's all. 27, GATT, Big Mama. What does she do? What does Big Mama do? 154 countries. What does she do? Does the same thing that all the others do, right? Sure. So, which is a good answer here? Um, let's look. 27 A, more stringent trade regulations? No way. The whole point of a trade agreement is less stringent, is lax, loosen up, right? So, A can't be right. B, to increase trade in North America. Is that what GAP does? Well, who does that? NAFTA or USMCA, right? That's the point of NAFTA, all right? Um, C, to lessen barriers, or D, to strengthen barriers? Lessen, absolutely, right? The whole point of any trade agreement is to lessen the barriers to trade, to loosen them up. What are the barriers to trade again? Good. Quotas and embargoes. Good job. Exactly. Cool. Okay, 28. Export more. That's all I got to read to you. Just the keyword. Export more. Surplus. Surplus. Totally. Surplus. Because export more is good. It's what every country wants to do. Okay, 29. This was the one I was trying to tell you earlier. As the value of a dollar goes up, as the dollar gets stronger, what happens to American companies when it comes to export? They can't buy as much. Can't sell as much. Right? When the dollar's really strong, other countries can't afford our stuff as much. So, A, domestic companies have a harder time selling their products, yeah. And B, foreign companies have an easier time, yeah. The answer is D, A and B. Are you clear? Yep, we saw that question on the quiz, right? Okay, 30. Why do we have tariffs? 30 is also the answer to number, written number, Two, three, three, let's look at three. Skip to three real quick. A whole long ass story about <laughs> Nokia and the forest. And all I was honestly asking you is, what is a quota and why? What is a quota? Limit, that's it, it's a limit. It's a maximum amount. 
Many countries have quotas on how much goods can come in from another country, quota. So what would happen if the United States put a quota on this technology? There wouldn't be as much, that's all. There'd be a limit. There'd be a limit to how much could come in, okay? Why do we do that? Why does any country put a max, a limit, a quota on goods coming in? Let's go back to number 30. So Eric said to protect its own businesses, yeah. Or A, to maintain domestic competitiveness. Why do we do anything to protect quota, tariff, embargo? To protect our country's businesses, okay? To maintain domestic competition. All right, that's 30, 30 is it. 31, what are we? Are we free trade? Raise your hand if you chose A. No, don't tell me. <laughs> oh, okay. 31. 31. I appreciate the honesty. All right, so are we free trade? No way. We're the opposite of free trade, you guys. You can't go to another country and bring as much back as you want. What do I mean? I mean, if you go to another country and you buy $20,000 worth of goods and you bring them in your suitcase back and you don't declare them and pay a tax, you're gonna be in trouble. You have to have, you have to fill out a customs form and you have to tell the customs official, I am bringing $20,000 worth of goods back from wherever you are, Mexico. And you're gonna pay a tax on that. That tax is called a tariff, okay? So we are not a free trade country. We practice protectionism. We have tariffs and quotas and embargoes. Why? To protect American businesses, okay? So what are we? Protect. Shunist. See it? Okay, the answer is B. 32. So, behavior that does not conform to acceptability. Bad behavior, ugly behavior, dishonest behavior. Oh, I'm sorry, that does. Misread. See, don't misread the question. Mm -hmm. That does conform to accepted beliefs. Ethical. 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 Right? Ethical. 33. Top managers cover their butts by doing what? By putting language on their website or in their books or in their employee handbooks or somewhere to say, we don't do shady shit. Yeah? That's it. Written code of conduct. Okay, 34. Which of these pairs, this was from a chart we looked at in our lecture. So, is a medical clinic giving low prices to low-income people, is that technically legal? I know it sounds fine, but is that legal? No. It's not collusion. Yes. Is it legal? No. No. That's called price discrimination. Even though I know you're reading it, you're like, well, what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. It's technically price discrimination. It's technically illegal. So A is not the right answer. Price what? Uh, it's called price discrimination. B, is sexual harassment for crying out loud <laughs> legal? No. no. Of course not. Who chose B, we need to have a drink. <laughs> C, is it illegal to pay non-living wages to workers in other countries. If you chose C, I got news for you. Most of the clothing that you're wearing was made by somebody at 50 cents an hour, or 25 cents an hour, or 10 cents an hour. It's legal. Newsflash, it's legal. D, is embezzling money illegal and unethical? Yes. Man, if you didn't choose D, I'm afraid of you. Which, correctly? Oh, you're afraid of me? I'm afraid of you. Where's currently Paris? If you don't think stealing money from somebody is unethical, wrong, and against the law, you got problems. Does it count with the siblings? I read it wrong. Then. All right. Illegal and unethical. Then you still have problems, but. I did. I did have problems. It is illegal and unethical to steal money. Okay, 35, Starbucks Oxley Act. What does the chief financial officer have to do? Plain English. Plain or English? Have to check in Certified. with people. More than that. Mm -hmm. What does the chief executive of financial officer have to do? The act is to report it. 
sign. Sign. That's it. The finance chief, the CFO has to sign the financial documents, just like you guys sign your tax return saying this information's honest. Okay? Answer is C. 36, what did Bernie Madoff do? Let's go through all A, B, C, D, E. A, who did insider trading? Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. There's your answer for written question number two. B, who operated a Ponzi scheme? Bernie Madoff, absolutely. C, who colluded with another company? Enron. Enron, absolutely. Who did they collude with? They colluded with Arthur Anderson, their accounting firm. D, who hid debt and falsely represented their income, the money was coming in, and expenditures? Enron also. And then he, E, who committed murder? I have no idea. <laughs> Nobody that we've talked about in this class, because that's not a white collar crime. Um, however, I have to tell you guys, Martha Stewart, can we look at number two, please? Because now I'm not joking, or number four. Martha Stewart did not commit murder. Martha Stewart did not deal drugs. Martha Stewart did not, I, a lot, I read some crazy ass answers here, okay? Um, you were not understanding the story. Martha Stewart stole information. Martha Stewart bought and sold stock. She didn't cure cancer, she didn't cause any cancer. She bought and sold stock. But the information she used was illegal because it was obtained from inside the company and that is unfair, okay? All right, 37. Unfair to other shareholders. You got it, yes. Unfair to other shareholders. Number 37, I purposely left out a word. I did it on purpose. What word is missing from the question JFK's what bill of rights? Consumer. Consumer. I purposely left that word out. Look at A, B, and D. A says companies, B says marketers, D says competition. What does A, B, and D all talk about? They don't. A, B, and D talks about the rights of who? Companies, okay? A, B, and D talks about companies. A, B, and D are all the same idea. Sesame Street question, which one of these is not like the other? Only C talks about JFK's who? Consumer. consumer. The answer is C, consumer. 38, I'm gonna read two words. Minimum law, minimum legal. Which one of these says a company will do the minimum, not a damn thing more? D. D, defensive. Defensive. Not E, Britney Spears. Just checking it. All right. 39. Which one of these goes above on some social causes? Maybe to be really good to employees, or maybe to be really awesome to customers. Accommodative. Accommodative. And then you guys, for number 40, already told me Enron was guilty of um, C, hiding debt. Okay, written question number one. I'll write it on the board for you, even though I wrote it on like almost everybody's paper. I wrote it so many damn times that my hand was gonna fall off. And you guys need it because you're gonna be doing this in your business plans, all right? Sales minus Cost of goods sold.